So basically, this is one of the main important page in every schematic, in every laptop schematic. Here, for example, in page five, as you can see. So in page five, we have the DC and battery charger, as you can see. Okay, so here basically we gonna find the DC and the battery charger circuit or the charges circuit. Okay, so page six we have the select and the battery connector. We have here system power three volt, five volt in page seven, as you can see. So the three volt and five volt are basically two main voltages in every motherboard. These voltages should be present in the motherboard as soon as you connect or you plug the charger, okay, without powering on the motherboard. So the system power plus 1.8 volt and 1.5 volt. So 1.8 volt basically is for the random access memory or the RAM, okay? And 1.5 volt is for the chipsets, for the North Bridge and the graphic cards, okay? The random access memory for this laptop that we gonna study is DDR2. That's why we have here 1.8 volt. So here we have the system power plus VCCP and plus 2.5 volts. So plus VCCP is basically the power for all chipsets on the motherboard, for the CPU or processor, for the North Bridge, and the ICH or input output controller hub. So here we have the CPU power VCC core. Of course, this VCC core is for the processor. Usually the VCC core is about 0.8 volt to 1.2 volt. Okay. So VCC core is the working voltage for the processor. So here we have plus 0.9 volt. So 0.9 volt is the RAM VTT, okay? Or the power for RAM terminals, okay? So basically 0.9 volt is the half of 1.8 volt. So the RAM basically has two voltages. The main voltage, for example, for DDR2, we have 1.8 volt and the VTT voltage, 0.9 volt. If we have, for example, DDR3, for example, the main voltage will be 1.5 volt, and the VTT, or the voltage for terminals, will be 0.75 volt. So let's go, for example, to page 7. Basically, in page 7, we have to find the system power 3 volt, 5 volt. So here, as you can see, we have 7. So this is the system power, 3 volt, 5 volt. So this is basically the system power circuit for 3 volt and 5 volt. So here we have the control IC. Here we have the 5 volt channel over here. Here we have the 5 volt channel. You will find always in every channel so MOSFETs, as you can see, ceramic capacitors, you will find two or more ceramic capacitors in the input here, basically the VBAT here equal to 19 volt. So two MOSFETs, here we have inductor, so basically the purpose of the inductor is to increase the current for the circuit. Then we have the filtering capacitors. As you can see, we have this chemical capacitor and another set of capacitors. Basically, the ceramic capacitors has as a purpose to reduce the noise in the circuit. Okay, and then we have the pad or the test point, and then we will get 5 volt. So the same for the 3 volt circuit. As you can see, we have the IC, we have two MOSFETs, we have inductor, two capacitors, and the pad where we can check whether we get 3 volt or not. 
So we have seen this system powers. So then we have here the power slip. So the power slip, basically we have S1, S2, S3, S5, etc. Okay. And the power sequence. In page 13, we have the power sequence. Then the clock generator in page 14. So basically, the clock generator is the IC that is responsible to generate the timing or the clock for the whole motherboard. So without this clock, the motherboard cannot work properly. So the purpose of this clock is to synchronize between all components and chips in the motherboard. Then here we have this component, as you can see, Yuna in page 15, 16, 17, 8, and 18. Basically, this is the CPU or the central processing unit. Then we have in page 19, the thermal and fan controller. Here, basically, we have an IC that controls the fan speed, okay, in accordance to the head of the CPU. When the head of the CPU increases, the speed of the fan will be increased, of course, and vice versa. And here we have this chipset, as you can see, the Calistoga. So this chipset basically is the North Bridge. So the North Bridge exists in page 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Okay. Then we have the DDR slots here in these pages. So in page 28, we have the CRT and the S video connector. As you can see, this is basically the connectors. And here we have the LCD connector in page 29. We have here then the ICH or the input output control hub chip. Okay. This chipset basically is the responsible for controlling all ports and connectors in the motherboard besides of the BIOS and the keyboard. So, for example, when you have many ports or many connectors are failed in the motherboard means you have the problem in the controller chipset, the ICH. You should check the ICH because the ICH controls that ports. So the IC heads basically exists for this schematic in page 30, 31, 32, 33, and 34. Okay, then USB 2 hub. So in page 35, you will find the USB circuit diagram. Then the fingerprint, the keyboard controller, the SPI or the BIOS, basic input output system chip and then in page 39 we have as you can see the point devices page 40 we have the super io or super input output here we have the serial port serial daughter board in page 42 we have the parallel port basically this port is used for printers and other devices we use usb connectors we can consider this port as an old port. So here we have the Azalea Codec IC. So this IC basically is the audio controller. It controls all about audio in the motherboard, including audio ports, mic and speakers, etc. Here we have the mic jack, as you can see. In page 45, we have audio amplifier and speaker jack. So here we have the s or the serial ATR hard disk drive connector. So HDD means hard disk drive connectors. So in page 47, we have the ODD connectors or optical disk drive connectors. So the table basically is different from one laptop to another. 
but the basics and the working principle is always the same. You will always find the system power ICS or circuit. You will always find the CPU, the North Bridge, the ICH, the BIOS, the CPU input output, etc. If you understand just one schematic, you can understand any other schematic and any other motherboard. So here, as you can see, in 48, we have also USB connectors, okay? 49, we have the card bus controller, as you can see. So here we have the PC card slot in page 50. Then we have the 1394 connector in page 51. And then mini card and SIM in page 52. We have here the LAN interface dash one. And here we have the LAN RG45 connector for the Ethernet. Okay. Here we have the docking connector, the MTC connector. Here we have Bluetooth, you will find here the Bluetooth circuit diagram. In page 59 we have lead, lead switch. Here we have lead board connector. Okay, all about light emitting diode that you can find in the motherboard. So in page 61 we have just screws here cables, socket, etc. So this is all about the table of continents. So always, if you want to go deeper into analyzing any schematic or any motherboard based on the circuit diagram, you should first begin with the table of contents because will let you understand in general all about the laptop.